Hello there and welcome to Complete Games with me James. Hope you guys are all doing well and we're back with the story of Ark. In the next two part episode we're going to be covering our final survivor, Gaius Marcellus Nerva. He was a Roman centurion who wrote all of his notes in Latin and is the final survivor from the island map read through. So gather round, sit back, relax and enjoy the explorer notes from Gaius Marcellus Nerva. It is the chaos of this land that has truly disturbed me, even more than its most titanic vicious beasts. Animals are meant to be savage, even when tamed, they're not truly civilised, but man? Man is supposed to be above the animal, yet the people here live in squalor and fight viciously over scraps like stray dogs. I've convinced some of them to band together under my leadership, and together we have found safety and order. Unfortunately they are untrained and lack cohesion, I'll have to fix that. I'm reminded of my first command in Darcia. Many men questioned by rank, wondering why they had to follow a centurion so young. It took time to earn their trust, but it was necessary. I could not have even a single soldier questioning me in battle, lest our discipline fail. Without discipline, our century's formation would crumble, and the legion would be exposed. It is the same here. These ragged men and women will not become a unit overnight, but I am patient and more experienced than I was in Darcia. I may be far from Rome, but I know this for certain. This island will know its might. Training grew easier once my changes began to see the results. In fact, they found such a wellspring of enthusiasm that their drills and chores alone cannot contain it. This morning, I found a flag flying above the armory. It was the symbol of the Imperial Legion, but with one of the island's flying lizards replacing the eagle, and the words in a foreign language replacing the SPQR, I'm told they say, the new legion. I admit, I smiled at the sight. Very well then, it's time to find out if I've created true legionnaires. We march at dawn. I know I'd chosen a soft target to test my men, but I expected a little more resistance. The tribe we assaulted was young, but supposedly they had seen some success as raiders. I cannot see how, given how swiftly they fell into disarray. Some even attempted to flee but did not get far. After scouring their fortifications for supplies, we raised them to the ground and planted our flag among the ashes. Let every savage tribal pretender know the new legion has arrived. I'm finally satisfied with our defences against flying creatures. The solution was obvious once I stopped thinking of them as special. With any foe, the goal is to control their actions, so instead of trying to block flyers completely, we created apparent holes in our aerial defences that enticed attackers into the kill zones. Our architect was grateful for the solution. He'd been dreading trying to build a roof over this whole fortress. We've grown too large for that to be practical, and soon we will be larger still. Our first true war begins soon. I suspect many black thumbs shall defect before its end. It did not take me long to grow accustomed to the weapons of this world, many of which are called guns, according to my lieutenants. They are far more accurate and deadly than any bow, but like any weapon, they are only as effective as their wielder. In the hands of the black thumbs, they are of no concern. In battle, We've been able to bait the Black Thumbs into attacking a wave of durable but disposable beasts before descending upon them with our main force. Our attacks are concentrated, while theirs are scattered. That makes all the difference. The Black Thumbs are destroyed. Their leader was defiant, but his tribesmen did not wish to fight the inevitable. They offered us his head last evening. I suspect surrenders will be more frequent now. The Black Thumbs were the first, but they shall not be the last. Yes, I see clearly, this is our destiny. The gods have brought me here to bring order, to save these people from their own savagery. Janus pulled me across the bridge of time and space, Mars lent me his strength, and now I shall create my own empire in their name. I've allowed the Legion to take a reprieve from war, at least for now. We need time to gather our strength and plan our road to conquest before we march again. Augustus did not unite the Empire by rushing into battle. After all, such things take time, and more importantly, information. As I write, my scouts are mapping the surrounding lands and observing any tribes that may oppose us. I have no doubt that they are not all like the Black Thumbs. 
One could very well prove to be my Mark Anthony, and when I find him, I will be prepared. While a prudent general must take his time to plan, I realise that comfort breeds complacence. So as many of my scouts range across the beaches and jungles, I have made sure to lead my main force out on regular raids. Our targets have been weak, mostly small villages and unsuspecting convoys, but they resist enough to keep my men's instincts sharp. Letting them keep the meagre spoils of these exercises has helped morale as well. Our actions haven't gone unnoticed, however. My scouts say many tribes are now avoiding the territory altogether now. Good, a fearsome reputation will serve the Legion well. Who could have imagined that a simple convoy would give the new Legion its first taste of adversity? Before today, the idea would seem absurd. They must have seen our approach, because just as we spotted our prey, we found our left flank beset upon by a pack of beasts. Though these creatures were smaller in size and number, they struck fast, they struck together, and they never lingered. By the time we chased them off for good, the convoy was long gone. Impossibly, I spotted but a single rider throughout it all. Who is she? If Mars has blessed me, does Minerva harry me? No, I was simply unprepared. I will not be again. It seems our neighbours have grown weary of our raiding. Today I received an envoy from the Golden Arrows who proposed a lucrative trade agreement between our true tribes. With the caveat we never encroach on their territory, or convoys of the Golden Arrows, or any of their allies. I have no interest in trade agreements, but I know how to seize an opportunity. So instead of accepting right away, I propose that we ratify the agreement with the tribe's leaders on a neutral site. I have planned long enough. It is time for the new legion to resume its march. News of my rather definitive response of the Arrow's proposal was spread quickly, but few seemed keen to act on it. Who can blame them? Without their leaders, the Arrow's quickly folded, and the new legion grew significantly in power and practically overnight. The other tribes only managed to interrupt their cowering long enough to send another envoy. A man named Edmund Rockwell. Given the results of the last one I received, I almost didn't believe it, but apparently this man is special. The other tribes seem to respect him as a neutral party, and I expect on the island we shall see. I did not expect much from Edmund Rockwell, but he has surprised me. He has a curious way of speaking, but clearly he possesses a razor-sharp intellect and a wide breadth of knowledge. Though we only met for half a day, I gained invaluable information about this island, which is apparently called the Ark. I shall have to send a scout to pinpoint where Rockwell lives. In addition to his expertise on the island, he's known to create elixirs of extraordinary effects. It would behove me to keep those out of my enemy's hands. It seems I was not the only one who was sceptical of Rockwell's ability to curb my ambitions. The nearby painted sharks mustered up enough courage to harass several of our coastal fortresses, but in doing so, they have confirmed their nature. During their raid, they only attacked from the air and sea. They patiently refused to set foot on land. If the sharks are at home in the ocean, then I will pull our coastal forces back and attack their outposts on the mainland. Once their island fortress is cut off from support and supplies, I can whittle it down to rubble at my leisure. And that concludes part one of our Explorer Note read-through. And in part two, we'll be finishing off the Island's Explorer Notes with Gaius Nerva and the final of the Island's Explorer Notes. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new here and leave a comment down below if you'd like to express your thoughts on the journey of Gaius Nerva. But that's all we have for this one. So until next time, I'm James from Complete Games and I'll see you. <laughs>